Kaminsky obviously tied for first. That would get her done uh, for both of those players would project potentially inside the top ten with a win this week, Mark Carnival. Well, there was an adjustment. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau actually hit at 363 off the tee at, 82, at 72 yards left in for his third and played it past this back left hole location, but decent look. He's directly behind the hole. This is inside 20 feet, a little bit uphill. And now with the shadows getting lengthening, their shadows now creeping, almost covering the flag stick here at the 15th, but DeChambeau still battling. Trying to get back to even now. Really, the golf course is firming quite up, quite a bit up. And Mark was talking about the fairways are running out, and the greens certainly are keeping plenty of pace. Now to Shambo, closer to 15 feet. This is for a birdie to get back to even. Contact with the golf ball, holding the finish up to the cup, and he missed it to the right. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with hitting a big drive and having a wedge in, but Mark, you got to take advantage of it. Par here at 15 for DeChambeau. He remains at plus one. Especially on a day when you just struggled for so long and you're over par, you finally got a good uh, a chance here inside 70 yards. That's basically just a, a pitch shot for Bryson DeChambeau and, and not capitalizing on that. So Bryson certainly out of sorts so far today in the opening round. To Kevin Sylvester. Sebastian Munoz, 140 yards on the downslope fairway to this back hole location. This is headed towards the right side of the green. Needs to get past the chocolate drop in the middle, and it will spin back. And now he'll have to navigate that big hump in the center of the green, directly in his line towards the whole location in the back center here at 17 outside of 30 feet. So close to being real good. Just got to get it over that thing, and then everything goes back towards the back of the green. Now instead... Sebastian Munoz is going to have to deal with that on his uh, putt for birdie from long range. To Mark Carnival. You know, Patrick Reed, who got off to the hot start, was three under through five holes, but unable to maintain that momentum. After a good shot in here to the 15th, has 10 feet, a little bit uphill for a birdie. As this ball slows, it'll try to drift to his right-hand side. Both hands on the putter grip now for Reed. Looks at the line, draws the putter back, ball away up to the cup, curls in the right edge. Well, it's been a while since anybody in this group has made a birdie. This one here for Reed at 15 has him back to one under par. Nice to have those curl in. The ball was going to miss to the right. However, Patrick Reed uh, getting a nice save from the hole and well-deserved. It's been a bit of a tough stretch there. Patrick Reed playing a very nice hole there. Fairway hit, nice wedge shot in, and capitalizing on the putt gets himself back to one under par. Kevin Sylvester to you. Sebastian Munoz has 49 feet for birdie. He's in the front right portion of the green. Whole location is back left closer to center. It's 25 paces on and five from the left side. Very narrow green. Of course the difficulty on this putting surface is that hump in the middle of the surface that is in line here. If he plays it over the center, it should turn it towards the hole. At least that's how it looks from my vantage point. Munoz now steps in 49 feet, strokes the ball. He's going to play it up the right side of that hump that pushes it right. Now coming back to the left. This is a good line slowing down, and that's going to come up five feet short. Right idea. Need a little bit more on it. Work left for par for Munoz at 17. He's six under. Unforced there, certainly with that approach shot being in the fairway and not quite getting it back there, but, but having only 140 yards, it certainly was expecting to have something inside 20 feet for a birdie. Instead, now grinding for that par, another time to grind. Really hasn't had to do that since that mishap there at the ninth when he made double bogey. Well, it could be a big par here late on a Thursday. He gets that, stays within one. I mean, we've had a ton of eagles so far today at 18. Nine eagles now at the 18th wow. hole today 51 birdies so a guy like Munoz you know you make a par there you can finish with a three and steal the outright lead late in the day front right hole location there on the 18th I guess yeah you've got uh, that little sideboard on the left that can help and it, the length isn't the issue it's a matter of guys being able to get it in the fairway in that small shoot uh, to give himself uh, a long to mid iron into that green and being able to hold it a redesigned green used to be about I'd say three times as wide as this. It went all the way down the penalty area to the left.
very narrow strip, got rid of that whole area and built up this little thing with uh, a huge penalty if you miss it to the left. Not in terms of a stroke, but very difficult to get the ball up and down, so it kind of forces the players to, to take more dead aim on that second shot, bringing in the penalty area that looms short and to the right. Yeah, that was 2012 when they made the change to 18 for a smaller elevated green, and it's uh, part of the work that's been done over the years, TPC Boston, originally Arnold Palmer designed the course established in 2002. And then about five years later, the redesigned Gil Hans uh, with Brad Faxon serving as a consultant. And that was named by Golf Digest best remodel in 2007. And now, once again, first time for this event, but uh, longtime host for FedEx Cup playoff events, Mark Carnival. He shot away here at the 16th for Patrick Reed. A low flighted shot's going to land short of the ridge, hop up, and they'll spin, but it's not going to stop. It's still a really good shot for Patrick Reed. That was an interesting way to play this one. That is inside 10 feet for Reed. This screen is elevated on the right hand side. Patrick landed that on the front edge and chased the ball up there, Mark. Great shot. Back to 17, Kevin Sylvester. Now, Sebastian Munoz. In the catcher's position, he is below the hole. This putt, just outside of five feet, will move a little bit right to left for par. And that 49-footer that he had to navigate over the mound in the center of the green and came up short. And this remains six under before heading to the par five, 18th. Comes to a set position, now regrips. The putter strokes the ball towards the hole to the cup and down. That was a quality putt for Sebastian Munoz as he exhales as he walks towards the 18th tee box. Got a good attitude in this round. Uh, starting out seven under after seven, you kind of have hopes for some, uh, maybe a course record, maybe a low round of, of your career. Uh, instead, that little hiccup there at the ninth uh, kind of slowed him down a little bit, but he's kind of gotten past the challenge. He's made that great birdie there at the 14th. Nice two putt there, and now... He's got a bit of a piece of candy here to finish off with the 18th. It's been a great day for him. Great afternoon for a lot of players. Munoz at one point was a co-leader. We have two others now tied for the lead at seven under. Cameron Davis and Tommy Fleetwood have caught Harris English a three-way tie for the lead on a Thursday as coverage continues from TPC Boston. First of three FedEx Cup playoff events at the Northern Trust. Hiring can be challenging, but ZipRecruiter makes it fast and easy. We talked to CEO Dylan Miskowitz, who needed to hire a director of coffee for his company, Cafe Altura. We would look through lots of applications for people who were not qualified. It definitely felt like we were looking for a needle in a haystack. So Dylan started using ZipRecruiter and found his perfect candidate in a few days. ZipRecruiter's powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash sports. We were very impressed with how quickly we had quality candidates apply through ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter is a powerful tool in our hiring process. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And now you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash sports. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash sports. ZipRecruiter.com slash sports. To be the number one irons in golf for five consecutive years and counting, Callaway can't stop pushing the limits. That's why they used artificial intelligence to create the new Maverick irons. AI has uniquely engineered a flash face cup in every Maverick iron to maximize distance throughout your entire set, while each club's center of gravity is precisely positioned to optimize launch. New distance is out there. It takes a maverick to find it. Get new distance at CallawayGolf.com. Callaway, the number one irons in golf. While the economy has seemed uncertain and day-to-day -day life is more challenging, Cardinal Logistics has a message for professional truck drivers like you. We have stable, dedicated routes that get you home evenings and weekends and offer exceptional pay open right now. Cardinal is proud of our dedicated and growing customer base of established companies that can keep you rolling when others have stopped. Drive a late model tractor with driver-friendly technology as you help keep the supply chain connected and the economy rebounding. Move your career forward today with Cardinal Logistics. Visit drivecardinallogistics.com or call 855-314-9996 to connect with Cardinal today. I'm not playing so I can brag to my friends. Or to win a trophy. Or to see my face on the cover of a magazine. 
I'm playing for something more important. How about you? I'm playing for the rest of my life. Through golf, the first tee teaches values that carry over to life. I learned a lot at the first tee. I even learned how to play golf. Visit firsttee.org to learn more. Three weeks of FedEx Cup playoffs. Here we go. Three weeks to be crowned champion. Action-packed. Absolutely perfect. High stakes. Historic moments. It's time to perform or go home. Don't blink. Three weeks goes fast. The FedEx Cup playoffs start here at the Northern Trust. Opening round coverage, the FedEx Cup playoff opener at the Northern Trust. You know, the wait is almost over. PGA Tour 2K21 is available starting tomorrow for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, Stream, and Stadia. Play against the pros or play with your crew in PGA Tour 2K21. You can play by the rules or create your own, but pre-order now and get the 2K Adidas My Player Pack and swing with some swag. Just visit PGAtour.2K.com to pre-order right now. Of course, Justin Thomas, FedEx Cup points later is the cover athlete for the new 2K21 video game, Mark Zagino. Well, speaking of leaders, we have a new leader, Earl, in this golf tournament. Cameron Davis, six green, 21-footer for birdie. His eighth birdie of the day gets him to eight under par. That is now your outright lead. Playing alongside of Cameron Davis, Tommy Fleetwood, a two-putt par at six. He's got a clean card, seven birdies, now one back. Both players heading to the par five seventh. Those guys playing off each other, of course. Jason Kokrak along with them, three under, just drafting on those two guys. Cameron Davis rolling in that long one, just caught the edge, kind of swirled down into the bottom, and now they've got that par five coming up. Maybe they can get another one. Cameron Davis, uh, the Aussie from Sydney, Australia, uh, one of those young guns. He's just 25 years old. Had a tough time when the PGA Tour restarted. After the 91-day hiatus, he missed four consecutive cuts uh, coming out of the restart. And now, in the lead, would project to possibly fourth in FedEx Cup points with a win. Mark Carnival. You know, Bryson DeChambeau's tee shot came up just a little short of the flag stick here at the 16th. 24 feet. In this whole location covered in shadows now. Should move to his left off the right slope as that ball is away up towards the cup. Has plenty of pace and... Slides by, and that rolls out a little bit. It's going to be three and a half, maybe four feet for DeChambeau. Currently one over, playing the 16th. Mama said there'd be days like this, Bryson. He's having a good rough go here, uh, but to kind of hang in there. He's got, of course, the par five coming up. And I'm really curious to watch him on 17. Uh, it's 350 yards to the front of the green. It doesn't seem like the right play, but I could see him being a little frustrated now, going ahead and Hitting the one way up by the green, kind of forcing the issue. We'll have to see. Yeah, one of those and some of these big names and those, uh, in that case, uh, of those players in that group, DeShambo, Sungjae Im, Patrick Reed, top six in FedEx Cup points. Other than Patrick Reed, the defending champion, who's had a solid day so far, really. And DeShambo has not been able to find any kind of momentum. With You've had all these birdie runs, especially on the front, and if you don't, get on one to start your day the back nine gets a lot tougher and it's just tough to make up for it card well Patrick Green's trying to make a little push it towards the end of his round here he's got nine feet for birdie at 16 gonna push to his right the whole way as that one is away holds the finish ball up to the cup and right over the front left back-to-back -back birdies for Patrick Reed he's now back to two under par Something to be said about rolling in a couple of 10-footers in a row gives you some tremendous confidence. You made that great par save back at the 14th and then followed up with back-to-back -back birdies at 15 and 16, and that's the stretch here, this 15 through 18. You can really salvage a round. You can really uh, make a good round great. Patrick Reed doing just that right now. Yeah, solid stuff from the defending champ. He's won two of the last four at the Northern Trust, Carney. And Bryson DeChambeau rolls in the four-footer for par, so the frustration continues, but at least he doesn't drop a shot. He stays at one over with a par here at 16. 
not the easiest. Some kind of, some of those comebackers that Bryson big right to lefter on that first one, and then it kind of settled into a little uh, a little straighter at the end. So Bryson able to uh, get the proper read on that. Sometimes uh, uh, you sort of just assume it's going to do the same exact thing it did the entire putt, but uh, a lot of times the ball certainly finds a little bit of a lower f spot, so that comebacker tends to be a little straighter than the original putt you hit when you hit it past the hole. And Cameron Davis, one of the eight players, at least here on day one, late in the opening round, that would project inside the top 70, where you have to be this week to continue your FedEx Cup playoffs. Davis in the lead with the 1,500 points, triple points this week projected, would move him to fourth in FedEx Cup points, the 25-year-old on fire this afternoon. And, you know, Harris English put up that 64 early today, and now we really have three of these rounds uh, here, Mark, with Davis in front, Tommy Fleetwood catching Harris English, and uh, for a while, Sebastian Munoz had tied for the lead a bunch of them in the afternoon, it looks like. You don't see that a whole lot, Earl. Usually the course dries up, the wind picks up a little bit, but we've seen pretty similar conditions all day. The guys even warming up this morning. A lot of them had long sleeves on, a little bit chillier this morning, so maybe in the afternoon the conditions were um, a little bit easier for the guys. Uh, we've seen plenty of low scores, uh, and, and what these guys have going for them now is that, boy, they post a low one now. They get to go out tomorrow morning with the fresh greens and uh, really post a, another low one and, and kind of start running away from the pack. And on the front nine, those opportunities are there. Finishing on the front, Matthew Wolf just hit a great shot into number nine. He has 10 feet for a closing birdie and a seven under round for him looking to close and finish with a flourish with five birdies possibly coming in on that front nine. Matthew Wolf has just been playing just some incredible golf there. After that uh, missed cut at uh, the Workday uh, Championship, or Workday Charity Open, I should say, uh, 22nd Memorial, then 12th in his title defense at the 3M Open, and how about that PGA Championship? Fourth place, and now here he is contending once again. To Mark Zucchino. Head cover off Earl for Tommy Fleetwood, 260, center of the fairway, par 5, seventh. He has not missed a fairway today. Seven under par, looking to add one more. It's a big cut, starts up the left. This needs to cut. It's a double cross heading left, and it stays there. That digs into the green side bunker. Went in pretty steep and pretty hot. We'll have to run over and get a look at the lie. Regardless, challenging bunker effort. Going to be that 40, 50-yard bunker range uh, challenge here for Tommy Fleetwood if he's going to add one more birdie. Uh, that's a miscue right there. Great spot in the fairway, just 260 yards to that uh whole location that's pretty in the much in the open over there on the front right very difficult uh, long bunker shot coming up the one thing he does have is is a little green to work with there with that hole located in the front right uh, but some slopes to deal with too it's going to be a very difficult up and down i know he's kicking himself he'd love to be able to go ahead and audible a mulligan right now but no mulligans on the pga tour earl he's had a good day and right alongside cameron davis as well those are two of the many uh, making some charges and for davis coming off birdie at six now uh, he has the outright lead at eight under par so obviously an opportunity possibly for him coming in to add to it a one-shot lead minus eight with fleetwood and harris english tied for second seven under mark zucchino well cameron davis had some trouble off the tee here at seven and had to kind of just get it back to safety from the left rough. He had some tree trouble, some heavy, thick rough over there, fescue grass, and has had to lay up well back. He's got 206 for his third into the par five. I had a look at the lie of Tommy Fleetwood's ball in the bunker. It's sitting up nice and clean, so that's the good news for Fleetwood. All right, now he's getting set to go here. Cameron, 206 front right hole location. Solid strike. He's leaning left like he might have lost it right and short-sided himself. Oh, it just pulls up shy. So Cameron Smith, he didn't quite get the contact he was looking for. He kind of looked away, was not happy, bails it out on the low side. He's going to have some work here to get up and down and remain at 8 under par. Well, Cameron Davis, their uh, errant tee shot there, maybe getting in the, uh, out of the moment just a little bit too much, starting to think too much out of about his score there, having to chip out smartly, though at least he wasn't being heroic on that second shot. So now just a little chip and a putt, see if he can get that up and down to save a par at the seventh. The Orlando.
listening to exclusive coverage of the Northern Trust, the opening event of the FedEx Cup playoffs from TBC Boston in Norton, Massachusetts. And as we do at the top and bottom of every hour in our live play-by-play coverage, time now for a leaderboard update brought to you by MasterCard. Tap and go with your MasterCard, the simple, secure way to pay. Cameron Davis taking the lead in the afternoon. Eight under par now. Three holes to play in a one-shot lead on Tommy Fleetwood and Harris English. Tied for second. Seven under. Fleetwood still with three to play. English in early with a 64 today. Two behind. Minus six now. Louis Ustays and Charlie Hoffman. Scott Piercy. Bubble Watson. Kevin Kisner. They're all finished with rounds of 65. In the afternoon, a few more. at six under. Kevin Strelman. Matthew Wolf. And Sebastian Munoz, who's coming in on the back nine. Kevin Sylvester. Sebastian Munoz trying to reach the surface in two at the par 5, 18th. His drive ran down the fairway and came up a yard short of the cross bunker. So good break, 205 to the whole location, which is in the front center of the green. Has to carry the hazard towards the surface. Six under par on the day for Sebastian Munoz. Now settling in the ball slightly on an upslope. Makes contact. Turning this over right to left. This is headed towards the left small bunker over there and it buries into the bunker. That is the exact spot you don't want to be on the left side. Long bunker shot coming up for Sebastian Munoz. Left of the green at 18. Mm, what a start for him, though, this afternoon. Seven birdies in a row, a career-high birdie streak at one point tie for the lead. He's playing that 18th. Two behind at minus six right now. Five under. These players are all in today. And done with 66 is Ian Poulter, Taylor Gooch, Daniel Berger. Now Robbie Shelton, Charles Howe III, Danny Lee, and Adam Scott posting five under par 66s. That puts them three shots back. Adam Scott, the uh, guy who won the very first tournament that he held here at TPC Boston. Dustin Johnson shot himself a 400 par 67 uh, this morning. Justin Thomas and Tiger Woods both with 68s. That's currently in 29th position. Rory McIlroy shot a 2 under par 69. John Rahm is playing the 18th at 1 under par. And Phil Mickelson posted a 74 3 over par this afternoon. Path to the PGA Tour, the Corn Ferry Tour in Columbus, Ohio this week at the Nationwide Children's Hospital Championship, the Scarlet Course at the Ohio State University. 65, six under par round for Jimmy Stanger to lead it by one. Lee Hodges, Nick Hardy tied for second, five under par and one shot back. Kevin? Earlier this week, the Canada Life Series created for members of Mackenzie Tour, PJ Tour Canada, and others after that season was canceled, played its second event, the Canada Life Series at Bear Mountain Valley Course. 29-year-old Yi Chow, a resident of British Columbia by way of China, built on his five-shot lead entering yesterday's third and final round by carding a closey 66 and route to an eight-stroke wire-to-wire victory. A major championship for the LPGA Tour this week. AIG Women's Open Championship. Only three golfers broke par today at Royal Troon. Amy Olsen leading the way with a 400 par 67. Good for a three-shot lead. Round one in Scotland. Mark Zucchino, back down to you. Ball sitting up nice and clean. Tommy Fleetwood. Greenside bunker, but a good 30 yards. Needs to get it up the shelf, get it to bite. Challenging third, he's at seven under par. Neutral face, splashes it out, gets it up that slope. Now skip into the hole, releasing to the hole. This is well done to the cup. Just going to miss on the high side. That settles in inside three feet. Not supposed to be that easy from there for Tommy Fleetwood. He'll have a really good look inside three feet to get to eight under par. Mark, you're right. He made that look easy. That was not an easy bunker shot from 30 yards. Uh, had to just go ahead, trust it, make a nice, full, aggressive swing, clip it just right. Spin worked out great. Now he's got a great look at a birdie to get himself uh, share the lead with Cameron Davis. Yeah, and Davis, unless he can chip in, is going to be uh, unable to extend that lead. He's short of the green, and Aaron T shot there cost him. So after taking the lead, trying to really at this point hang on to it, Mark Zucchino. And we've got some more issues here for Cameron Davis Earl. He had his fourth from underneath the green and caught it heavy. Got the sandwich stuck in the ground. And 
now he's got a good 20 feet for the par save. Eight under par, clean card. Certainly doesn't want to drop one at the par five. But he's going to have to need to make a long distance effort here if that's going to be the case. This is just inside 20 feet. We'll work to his left. Putter back. Starts on the right side, working left, and he has it. Clutch stroke. Well, that never looked like a five, but it is one. Well done. Eight under par, two left to play for Cameron Davis. You're right, Mark. It never did look like a five after that errant tee shot, but sometimes it takes just one good shot, and that's really all Cameron Davis did on that hole. Made that 15-footer uh, for his par. Way to grind it out, Cameron Davis. He stays at 8-under. Man, big putt for him. Yeah, he could be caught here by Fleetwood, but you've got a tough par 3. It's been the most difficult all day, that par 3 eighth hole coming up, and not the easiest of par 4s to finish at the ninth. So, at least for now, that keeps Cameron Davis in front. Kevin Sylvester? Well, Sebastian Munoz in that small pot bunker left of the green, ball below his feet, has to elevate quickly. Blast this out. Onto the surface, lands softly, and that's going to ride down the ridge. Good-looking shot, although it's heading towards the front of the green and then climbs the slope. It will stay on the surface. He'll be just short of the hole below it, and it'll be a downslope putt, if that makes sense, being below the hole. But that's how the green's contoured in about 15 feet. Kevin, there are all kinds of contours and slopes and ridges over there on 18. Special Munoz not taking advantage of that great drive. They hit way down there, having just 205 yards to the hole. Let's see if he can get one final putt in. Uh, tremendous day so far for Sebastian. Yeah, and a chance to close things out with a birdie just like he started the day with a birdie at one and made six more after that career best birdie run for Sebastian Munoz. Kind of showed the way, really, in the afternoon, Mark. All these other guys got on the uh, back nine and then now finishing on the front like our leader. Cameron Davis, they were able to follow the lead there, and it was just Munoz out this afternoon, kind of the pace setter, showing the way to these low scores in the afternoon. We thought it was going to be something extra special, but uh, you know, now that Cameron, or that uh, Sebastian Munoz is going to step back and, and have dinner tonight and think about what he did today, I hope he takes a huge positive out of it because he had uh, rarefied air there as he went to the eighth tee, and he had some challenges. He had to uh, get past. Uh, that double bogey at the ninth is uh, sure going to irk him a little bit, but uh, he battled strong, and uh, if he can get that putt in at the last, shoot himself 700 par, 64. He's got to be certainly pleased with his start here in the FedEx Cup playoffs. It's going to be for a ninth birdie today in this opening round for him, and we've had barrages of birdies, and a lot of these runs coming on the front nine where our leader's coming in, Cameron Davis. Uh, forget about the birdies he's made. He can't. He's made eight of them, but... A great par save, about a 15-footer moments ago at a par 5 to salvage a 5. So he's got these two to play in the next one coming up. The difficult 8th, but he remains at 8 under. Now Tommy Fleetwood stepping in. A short one for a birdie and a share. Knocks it down from a couple of feet. No problem for Tommy Fleetwood. He's now 8 under par as well. Matt Wolf at the ninth hole, 6 under par. Beautiful look from just left of the hole, and he leaves it out to the right. Good speed, but just misses on the right. Matthew Wolf taps in. Great round. Six under par, 65. Oh, so a good opportunity for him. But again, par the great scoring in the afternoon. And there's another young gun there, Matthew Wolf. And a projection for him inside the top 30. Are a lot of players potentially making big moves this week. Kevin Sylvester. Sebastian Munoz, this will be a quick putt down. Just taps it, rolling right to left towards the hole. and stays outside right. Never came back to the left for Sebastian Munoz. And he will have well, two and a half, three feet for a closing par and to finish at six under. What a crazy round there. You know, seven under the first seven, and then he's going to be one over the last 11. How much sweeter it would have uh, felt uh, with that round if he could have gotten that one down. But it looks like it's going to be a final hole par if he can get that one in the bottom. And. Uh, but he's got to walk away going, you know what, I would have probably taken six under par before I started, and uh, let's move on to the second round. Yeah, in the end, and he does knock it in uh, for the par save at 18. Can't take advantage of that easy par five coming in, but uh, still a nice start to the week, 65, and he's among the many stacking up at six under par, Mark Carnival. One of those players that's over par is Bryson DeChambeau here at the 
par 4 17th. Really did not hit a very good approach shot. Hole located back left. Bryson DeChambeau has 65 feet putting from the front of the green to this back left. And he's got to go over one of these hogs backs that's in the middle of the screen. So it's going to be uphill to there and then downhill and then swinging hard from right to left. DeChambeau at one over. Settles in with that long putter braced against his left forearm. Wide stance, big swing of the putter. Now gets on the top of that hog's back. Now we'll track down towards the hole. This needs to slow down. And that scoots by. And that's going to be in the five, maybe six foot range for DeChambeau as it still trickles. DeChambeau will have that for par here at 17 to remain at plus one. Let's go to Mark Sacchino. Kevin Streelman walking into a six foot birdie effort at number eight. This will be for back to back birdies to get to seven under par. Not many this close today at this difficult par three eighth. Trying to convert for two to the hole, and he has it. He walks it in the front door. Back to back, Kevin Streelman, seven under, one to play. Only eight birdies on the eighth hole today, ranked the, the number two uh, most difficult hole on the golf course. Kevin Streelman, the two time uh, PGA Tour winner, uh, really uh, having a really quiet, nice season. Currently ranked. Uh, it was projected to move up to 10th in the FedEx Cup rankings. To Mark Sacchino. Tommy Fleetwood coming off the great sand save at 7. He's 8 under par for the day. Perfect on the card, nice and clean. He's also perfect with fairways hit, but that doesn't matter here at the par 3 8th. 225 back center hole location. Just saw Kevin Streelman in the group ahead hit it to 6 feet. So you can get one close. This is up the left side, aimed at the left edge of the green, trying to lean the cut back to the middle. This needs to get down. Oh, he double-crossed it. He has pulled that into the hay. Left of the green here at number eight. That is on one of those large mounds covered in fescue on the opposite side of the mound. This is going to be a brutal up and down for Tommy Fleetwood. There are birdies out here for sure, but if you're a little off, you can get in this fescue, uh, this long native area that's really hard to maybe even find your golf ball. This morning we saw Webb Simpson lose a golf ball on the ninth hole uh, left of the fairway. So uh, we're cut out for Tommy Fleetwood there on that uh, after that pulled iron shot at the eighth. And back to you, Mark Zucchino. 225, Cameron Davis off an all-world par back at seven. He's at eight under par. Starts this way up the right. This is just looks like a block. He's going to have to hook this a good 30 yards trying to get it to turn over. And that did not turn over, I don't believe. I lost that one high in the sky. It is not on the putting surface. He started it well right. And I, and I think it just turned over and it's deep into the green. Playing a big swinging hook. One too many clubs at least. This is another awkward one here for Cameron Davis. Market went well over the green, flew the green, and then went deeper. Uh, he'll be in the primary rough, not a lot of green to work with, so he'll be able to find his for sure. Tommy Fleetwood looks like he's more in the long native grasses, uh, but all in all, for our two leaders, not good shots here at the eighth. Yeah, no guarantees either one's going to stay eight under par there. Tough spots at the eighth, Mark Carnival. Well, Patrick Reed had 131 into the 17th green from the First cut of rough, the ball released past the hole to the back fringe. Has 20 feet downhill as that ball is away, working left to right towards the cup, and it's just bounced a little bit out of that fringe. So Patrick going to reach into his pocket for a mark, just a little bit of work left for his par, but uh, wasn't able to control that spin. Reed currently two under, playing the 17th. Tricky little short par four here, the 17th. Uh, visually is, is the difficult part. You're hitting your tee shot to this area, and then you got lots of different mounds. So one that guards the front of the green, you can't really see uh, the green very well. And then you've got the uh, slope that kind of bisects the middle of the green, divides it into two, and it makes it very difficult to uh, hit the shot, but then also uh, to get the right spin. Because if you kind of hit on the bottom side of that ridge, it takes off like Patrick's did. Right back to Carney again. Well, no, Bryson DeChambeau. Plenty of work left for his par here at 17 from behind the hole. And now he's going to readjust it. You know, these All three of these players, M, DeChambeau, and Reed, in great position, but you just don't want to lose much position. Fourth for DeChambeau, but 
currently at one over, trying to stay there here at 17. Puts down the slope, starts left, turning right and in. That's a good two putt there for Bryson. He remains at one over, headed to 18. Solid stroke there. We've seen uh, plenty of miscues on the green for greens today for Bryson DeChambeau. So to get that left to righter in the hole, give him a little confidence as he goes to the par 5 18th. Co leaders Tommy Fleetwood, Cameron Davis, they're at the 8th. They're, it's a par 3. They're at 8 under and both missed the green. Going to have tough times getting up and down in 60 seconds. Have you dreamt about going to the Players' Championship and seeing the world's best golfers take on iconic TPC Sawgrass? Enter the Golf Breaks by PGA Tour sweepstakes, and that dream could become a reality. Golf Breaks by PGA Tour is offering the chance for two people to go to the Players next March, including three nights accommodation with Saturday and Sunday passes to the tournament. Enter at theplayers.com slash contest. You could be watching the best players in the world at TPC Sawgrass. Enter today at theplayers.com slash contest. Preparation isn't an option. It's a necessity. Putting in the time doesn't mean you reap the reward right away. But the long days and countless rounds, they will pay off. The grind will prepare you to take the path of those who went before you. Work hard now to keep moving forward. But to make it farther, it takes more to be next. Follow the 2020 Corn Ferry Tour season only on golf. Tommy Fleetwood in the native grass above the hole on a giant mound left of the par 3 eighth. Ugly would be a compliment to describe this shot. It's his second from 73 feet. He is bogey free for the day at 8 under par, but if he's going to remain there, it's going to be rem remarkable. Gets a lot of club on it, comes out very high, lands hole high, now trickling down the slope to the other side. That's going to funnel off the green into the first cut. He'll be back up the hill from outside 20 feet for the par save. and Well done, but very difficult, just a horrible leave. Couldn't take too much of a chance there and, and try to land it, maybe one hop in the rough or anything. So Tommy Fleetwood taking his medicine, knew he hit a uh, you know, poor shot there, got the ball up in the air a lot, landed on the green and all the way over. So a very difficult spot for Tommy Fleetwood. And the other co-leader next, Mark. And a big swing from Cameron Davis from beyond the green. He gets just too much ball on this lob wedge. Was trying to take the big swing and get it slid underneath the golf ball. Instead, he caught too much of it. That's going to be a good 35 feet past the hole. So our two gentlemen here at 8 under at number 8 have lots of work to stay there. They're not the only ones there at the 8th. It's been a bear and a beast today, the, the par 3 8th. Uh, but it certainly helps some players out. Tiger Woods making birdie. Kevin Streelman we just saw earlier uh, making a birdie uh, so Cameron Davis now will have a long putt uh, made a long putt the last hole for a par to try to stay at eight under and Tommy Fleetwood will either be a, you know, a long chip and run or possibly a putt from the intermediate cut yeah unless something a miracle happens for one one of the two that lead is going to come back to seven under par outside shots certainly for both to knock it in now Streelman at seven under par, he's coming in just up ahead at the ninth, playing in from 164. Hits it just short of the green. Oh, come on, trickle up onto the edge. It's not going to quite get there, but that whole location is front, so that's inside 20 feet, and that still is a legit chance from just off the green for what could be a go-ahead birdie for Kevin Streelman to post eight under. Needed just one more little kick to get it up there and trickle to the hole. Uh, it'll be a big right-to-left swing, but it's been a really solid day. For Kevin Streelman, uh, early round eagle at the 15th, his opening nine, where he hold uh, a wedge shot there on that par four. So that's certainly a bonus, uh, 148 yards to, to make that eagle there at the 15th. That was coming off of birdies on 13 and 14. Uh, he just kind of kept the momentum going as he went to the front nine, and it's been a solid day for Kevin Streelman. He'd love to add one more birdie. And if he did so, that finished the day with three straight birdies and get himself to eight under par. Tough finish coming in at 8 and 9 on the front, Mark Sakino. Yeah, it is a very difficult finish, Earl, and we've got some par efforts here. Tommy Fleetwood will go first, 33 feet, but he's off the putting surface. Had the wedge originally, he was going to belly a wedge, but went back to get putter. Going to use putter from off the green, looking for a long distance par save. Swing of the blade comes out nice and smooth up to the right but it just violently keeps moving right i think that was a
bad misread there. He was playing left edge, and that had a good two feet of break left in it. And now we have an opportunity here, a lot of work. This is a four-footer minimum, maybe just inside five feet for the bogey for Tommy Fleetwood here at eight. Saw Sung J M earlier today make a double at the eighth. It just takes one bad swing of the club to get yourself into some trouble around that eighth green with the the native grasses uh, kind of looming both on the right by the bunker and then on the left that Tommy Fleetwood found. Uh, you don't want to compound the air though, and that's kind of what Tommy's doing right here. He, he did the smart shot to just get the thing uh, out on the green. It went a little bit long, but it's so important to get the next one down in two, and he'll have to make uh, that. Uh, Le longer 